today's guest is a highly regarded in the global publications for her extensive knowledge in design, along with being recognized as an Emmy award-winning television and film producer. During the global shutdown, she made the decision to sell her home in Las Vegas and follow the call of her heart, making her way to her ranch in San Diego, which is now known as the Ruckus Retreat. Because of her relationship, 12 years just ended, she knew that her ranch would be the perfect healing space. The vision came to her as she stood on a hill overlooking 15 acres that she'd purchased over a decade ago. This is when she realized that COVID and the global situation was an opportunity to go inside, heal herself, and create a healing space for others. Please welcome Brenda Markstein. How are you? Oh, fabulous. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored that you uh, invited me to be your guest. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited because you have done some pretty amazing things and I, we got to jump into it. There's, I mean, we could talk for hours, but we've got to jump into this because there's some pretty amazing stuff. So, I mean, probably the biggest, I mean, you climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa, you've trekked through the rainforests <laughs> of Mexico, you swam in the Dead Sea, bungee jumping in Thailand, you're an avid <laughs> golfer. I mean, you've played Pebble Beach. I mean, you've been to Ireland. I mean, tell me a little bit about your background because it's fascinating. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I've lived a long lifetime to experience all those wonderful experiences. And um, that's what all that beautiful um, richness comes. And now with that happening, um, I'm a little, I was a little girl in Arizona and I always had these visions of and being an athlete that I want to travel. I wanted to travel the world and experience the world. And so I did take up golf and uh, that helped me, uh, you know, play in a lot of places all over the world. But I was always the one that wanted to explore. And when um, I, well, I've had like almost four lifetimes, had children very young and um, went to the Design Institute in San Francisco and became a designer and costume designer on stage, um, started to enjoy the uh, life in the Bay Area. Um, where do I begin and where do I end? All I know is everything that's happened has happened for me and it is beautiful synchronicity that has brought me here. And the epic um, transformational year for me was when I did do this in one year, when I climbed Kilimanjaro, I actually um, traveled to 43 countries all over the world, sat with a lot of spiritual leaders all over the world and um, experienced different cultures, uh, people. And we're all the same all over the planet, looking for our spiritual connection with whatever you want to say is spirit, God, you know, we, we hold no judgment. And I realized all that that I experienced, all the people I've met, even all my beautiful children and all the experiences. We have five generations in our family, by the way, of living. So I have all this rich background to, to tap into as well, you know, in my family. And from that point, having the ranch and um, doing this was the accumulation of a, um, of a life of experiences and uh, opening the retreat and healing myself. It has been um, what we call liquid love. Everyone coming here feels like they've arrived home. And I say, you arrived home to you, no judgment. And you leave that at the gate, whatever you brought, you leave at the gate. And then you come in here experience to experience what we've created here. And everyone has, I should say everyone, um, yes, I am going to say everybody. They call it very, very magical. Magic Malcolm, they call it. And um, I, um, I am honored to be chosen to share this gift with the world. That, that's amazing. And <laughs> first of all, I mean, a huge decision that you made was starting a brand new business in the middle of a global pandemic. I mean, that right there is like next level you definitely have to be strong and not faint of heart to, to make that decision. But why did you decide to start the ranch at that time? Like, what was the biggest challenge in making that decision? For me, it was an opportunity. When COVID hit, I was in India, <clears throat> one of my last, it was an epic year for me. 
I, in one year, I climbed Kilimanjaro. In one year, I bungeed entirely. In one year, I uh, went to Peru and journeyed with shaman. In one year, <laughs> this is all an epic transformational year for me. Taught a class and climbed another mountain in Montana. And all these experiences that I was having, I topped it off with Burning Man. Then, <laughs> I know. And here I am, a grand, I was a grandmother at 34. So here I am, a grandmother doing all these things and proud of it. Then um, ended up in India in February. And when I came back from India, which I am looking at these beautiful, colorful, amazing people. When I came back from India, I um, look at the ranch and I said, wow, my relationship at the time was we had just split. So I was looking for another space to heal myself as well. Oh. And all of us, if we really recognize that first, that we're all in some sort of form of healing. And when I saw the ranch, I looked around and said it had been in abused in a lot of ways. And I said, I am, I am going to do this. I am going to take this on. And it's an opportunity. What better thing to do is get a space for healing in a, in a space where people were screaming to be healed, scared to death of going outside. And that was a moment of clarity, vision, passion. I was a knowing, a clarity came over me. This is all the things that you've done have led you to this space. Now let's go. I love that. So now <laughs> did you have previous experience in running a business prior to starting the ranch? I uh, ran a design business when um, I got a design school in San Francisco, and um, I actually had my own business with, with two, two small children. My first husband has passed at a very young age, so um, I was a very young mom with two small children, and there I knew I had to support my, my children, so I decided to start my own business in the Bay Area as a designer, and yes, and then when um, I married an, again, had another child, a son, and decided, well, okay, I get to be mommy <laughs> for some beautiful, pre you know, precious years. And um, all of a sudden I went, well, I really want to, to organize things. I've always been a thing. I want to create. And so at, at, our, at our club that I was playing golf, I started doing plays and um, I started doing, um, I actually made a movie, I had no idea what I was doing. And during that time is allowing myself to create. So yes, when I say a business, uh, yes, I did a small business. And yes, I think being a parent, there's, there's a lot of business in that too as well, so. I think there's a lot of parallels to motherhood as well as like running a business. I mean, there's like chaos management, <laughs> there's overseeing <laughs> people. I mean, there's so many parallels to motherhood that it's just like anybody who's a mom can run a business. I mean, there's so many different things that you never really <laughs> think of that are the same, but they really are when you look at them from a different lens. And it's so cool too, that you took this life experience, not only from your previous business, but all these adventures that you've been on to turn this and make this into an amazing place for people to mm -hmm. heal. Especially like, I'm so glad that you said that it was, you're right. It was a time that we all needed. We all needed to heal. I mean, I think that's something that we're still all working on too, because, you know, we're slowly coming out of this and kind of getting back to normal, whatever that looks like for different people. But when you started this business, what type of support system did you surround yourself with? I mean, because it seems like that's a massive undertaking. Did you have people that came along on that journey with you? Let's talk about the systems that you put in place. Cause I'm a systems <laughs> and process girl too. So, <laughs> um, the system for me, believe, no, um, I've always been as if you're in your passion, this is not work for me. Every day I get up, I look at this as an opportunity to grow for me, but also this space. And, and my sister at the time, she, she came to the ranch, a dynamic girl. Uh, and she said, Hey, you know, I'll help you for a while. 
I had a nephew that came in. And when you're on passion, when you're on, on path, and when I mean on path, you know this is where you're, you're, you're supposed to be in life. And the synchronicities that start happening, you start, energy is huge. You start drawing in the people that are supposed to be with you in this process. And some stay for a while and some um, kind of go in and out. And I always said, um, don't hire to your weakness, hire to the gift, okay? So I don't like the word weakness. So I, what I've always done is watch what comes out of my mouth. <laughs> and I said, well, this is not my gift. This is my gift, but this isn't. Therefore, my sister was the um, person that would crawl in the attic and get rid of the, the, the mice. My nephew is the one that crawled under the house and put the air conditioning units. And then my tech guy who'd worked for me for 12 years decided to come work with me um, full time. He's tech. Then a beautiful um, lady that was a friend of my daughter's came and said, okay, I'm wealth management, but I want to change my life and I want to be yoga. And so now she's my CEO. So all these people started fitting this beautiful puzzle piece that came. But I feel that when you are really passionate about what you're doing and, you, and you're in the right place in your life, and I believe that what happens energetically, things start to work. And that's exactly what did and is happening. What would you say to someone if they're, if they know that they are called to do more and they know that they want to do more, like you mentioned, like with the gal that transitioned from, you know, wealth management into a different role, what is something that you would tell someone if they're like, I know that I want to do more, but I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get there. Be comfortable with the uncomfortability. Because if you are doing that, that means you're growing out of the pattern that you've already done. This has got you to this place in your life. Everything that you've acquired and all that knowledge. It's okay to have that little, little um, I don't want to say fear, fear, a little excitement that you're stepping into something that is new. You know, making that first step is sometimes the hardest. But once you make it and you go, okay. This, this is what I'm going to do. This is my vision. I, I saw a vision and this is my vision and this is my passion. Therefore, I'm going to step into that and have a belief structure. I already see things uh, done actually before they're even there. I visualize and see it done. Then it's almost like a stream and the water flows to wherever that is because now you've already created the vision and it's very powerful. So be comfortable with the uncomfortability because now you're stepping into something new and excitement. You're creating that for yourself. I love that. It reminds me of a quote where somebody said, you know, hard is not always bad. So when things are hard, that could actually be a sign that things are going the way that they're supposed to because it's uncomfortable. And that's when we grow mm -hmm. the most. Yes. Yes. Yes, we do. And you're asking yourself, every time you're doing that, you're asking yourself to grow and be proud. Be proud of yourself. Like, okay, when I mean pride, it's, it's just I'm learning to receive. If someone gives me a compliment now, I'm receiving that. And it's going in this wonderful little bank of, of you know, like, okay, I'm on the right path. And um, it's exciting. Be excited for yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, where can people find out more information about the ranch if they want to come visit you or find out more information? Where's the best place for people to go? Okay, Rocas, R-O-C-A-S, which is rocks in Spanish, retreat.com. And that's our website. And you can book your stays. It'll show you all the places that we've done. We've got a winery that we converted into a place to stay. We have a ranch house. We have a stone cottage. We have yurts that you can come stay in that look like Moroccan village. We have a tiny home. So in other words, you're going you're gonna to have an experience here that you choose. We have a meditation room. We, we have a lot, and we're growing all the time. So um, then whatever you, it's almost like it's this menu, the sports board. What are you here to experience? Oh, that's so exciting. Now, one thing that I ask every single podcast guest is what is one piece of advice that you would give to a small business owner that's listening? Mm. 
energy, okay? Your energy, your passion is that what you're stepping into. Always know that that's going to draw in um, um, the people that you need to be there for you. So energetically, put it out there, but always in that, stay in the passion part because people recognize that. People recognize that energy and that passion. And even times when it's hard, you know, it, and you think it's hard, that is a time to step into more growth. So I think that keep it the passion and the energy. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much for spending time with us. I know <laughs> that you've got a lot going on. So thank yeah. you again for being here. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, Jillian. You are awesome. Thank you. I love, I love your energy. Thank you. I appreciate that.